I've ranked every wide receiver drill and at the end of this video you're gonna know exactly what drills you should be doing if you want to go D1. Let's start with the ladder drills. My biggest problem with ladder drills is that they don't translate to the field. Ladder drills can be really effective but if you do this one part wrong you're honestly wasting your time. When I was a freshman in high school I didn't know what drills I was supposed to be doing on the field but I knew that I had to be putting in extra work. So like of course my mind was like let me just get in some ladder drills. All these different drills I was doing them every day but as I continued to go against better and better opponents I realized that my release bag had to get deeper. I realized that I wasn't actually learning how to do releases. I was just getting really good at these ladder drills. My favorite release was to step behind like I was doing this behind step in the ladder drills. Now don't get it twisted. All those drills are great and they will help you to get better coordination. If you do some of those drills that I just showed you, it will improve your coordination. It will improve your athleticism. But our goal isn't to have good coordination. Our goal is to be a good receiver. So why are we spending our time doing drills that won't actually translate to the field? So I came to the conclusion, instead of doing ladder drills, why don't I just work actual football movements. I'll still do my ladder drills every now and then but really just for a warm up and then we're getting into more position specific movements. I've never seen a receiver line up on the line of scrimmage and start hitting some of these to do a release. That little step is not convincing any DB that I'm going anywhere. But if your plan is to step on the field, do some ladder drills and go home, you didn't even spend no time to get better at any football movements. So for that reason the ladder is getting the F tier bro. Trash. Let's get to the cones bro. Let's start with the releases. Like these cones are so versatile. You can literally use them for anything. When I use these cones, I use them as landmarks. And I'll go through and I'll look at a bunch of different releases that I've seen NFL players use. And every time I come to a release, I just want to make sure that I'm doing my release and get into my next landmark. Just so I can practice stepping outside of that DB's frame. Like I was saying earlier with the ladder drills, when I was doing this behind step release, my body wasn't getting anywhere. And I wasn't able to convince the DB that I was leaving him in order for him to react. So I could come back underneath and make a route. My whole body was just staying still while I was doing these in place ladder drills and then I would just get jammed up. I ain't get open at all bro. I'm not gonna count. And now you can get as creative as you want to with your releases because you know that no matter what you do you're gonna be stepping outside of this DB frame and he's gonna have to react to you. So maybe I'm lined up square. I do a split release get outside and come back in. Maybe I'm lined up again and I split go inside and take off. Maybe I just line up and I just take a speed release outside, making sure that I get outside of my landmark so the DB can't touch me. But this framework for the cones has really helped me to innovate my releases and get comfortable with moving lateral outside of the DB's frame. But what's even better than the drill for releases is the drill that I like to use for breaks. Let me set it up real quick. We're working on that speed cut. Any kind of timing, out route, sales, in routes. This drill helped me a lot in terms of my route efficiency. Send my quarterbacks over here and I'm running this timing out route. After I come out of this break and I turn my head back to the QB, it's important for me to fight back negative and actually lose yards, but I'm running away from the DV who's just triggered and is trying to break up this pass. And obviously, if you have a QB, that'll be better, but the most important part of this drill is learning how to work negative out of your breaks. So full speed, I'm pushing up vertical, I'm snapping off, and I'm getting back behind. <sighs> Dude, I really should have stretched before that one. I'm not gonna lie. If this video gets 55 likes, I'll make it part two for DBs, bro. For all of my dark side demons. We can get 55 likes, right? Yeah, we can do that. If there was one piece of football equipment that I would recommend everybody has to have, I would say the cones for sure. Just because they're so versatile in how you can use them. But for that reason, cones are in the S tier. You need to be doing these if you aren't already. Up next, we got the little hurdles. Now the hurdles, they look cool, bro. I'm not gonna lie. But in all honesty, it's nothing that you can't replace with a cone. Now when it comes to the hurdles, there's a couple of different ways you can use these. But my favorite way to use the hurdle is when it comes to these releases. Because when I line up as a receiver, this hurdle makes it super easy to visualize where a DB would be standing. Like there's nothing that you can do with the hurdle that you can't just do with your regular cones, bro. So for that reason, I'm putting the hurdle in the C tier. But it do look cool though if you're recording. So like if you get the combination of the hurdle with some cones out, you see like that just looks like you're getting some real work in you feel me just like the vibe of it up next is the bands these bands can be really helpful when we're trying to be more violent in and out of our movements some of my favorite drills to do with this is just a straight up banded get off put the band around your waist let somebody else get behind you and just practice getting out of your stance firm boom push out because that vertical push is going to help us to sell the go ball on every single route that we do we want to make sure that we're selling that fade route for as long as possible this is another mistake i used to make a ton as a receiver that again when I was a freshman in high school. All I knew about receiver was that they had to get out of their breaks fast, catch the ball, and then go and make a play, juke somebody after they caught it. 
But once I learned how to train my stem, it really helped me to take my game to the next level. Now they call it the stem of the route because it's supposed to look the same to every single route on the tree. So let's say I'm lined up and I have a curl route. For those 12 yards, I should be running as fast as possible so that way the defense is gonna back up and have to guard the fade ball. And then when I come to my break and get out of my route, it's gonna create that much more separation for me down the field. Whereas when I was a freshman in high school, I would run the stem slower so that way I could get out of my break quicker. But when you're slow in your stem, that makes it obvious for the DB that you're not running a go ball. Because if you're running a fade route, you're going full speed humming up the field. You feel me? But that goes for every route. But let's say I have a three-step slant. For those first three steps, it should look like I'm running the 100 on a track like Usain Bolt. And then all of a sudden, after step three, one, two, three, I can step, break, and make my separation that way. So these bands can be really helpful when it comes to strengthening the muscles that we need in order to push vertical. But with the bands, you can also get stronger in your releases as well. Let's say I had it on my waist and somebody's holding it off to the side. Now I can come in my receiver stance and practice taking these hard, violent steps outside. The bands are pretty versatile and they're definitely gonna help you get more violent in your movements. But because you need somebody else to do them with you, I'm only putting them in the B tier, bruh. Up next, we got routes on air, bruh. Now, in a perfect world, routes on air would be on the S tier. Building that timing and that chemistry with your quarterback is so unbelievably helpful, bro. It's going to be times where even if you're not 100% open, the quarterback's going to be able to throw you the ball just because of how many times you've repped that route before. So if you get a chance to do routes with your actual quarterback, do them 100% of the time, bro. But the only drawback to routes on air is how many are you actually going to be able to do before you get tired, bro. Like, we can't just be running post routes out here all day. But especially on the timing routes, the out routes, the in routes, the curls. You you want to be repping those as many times as you can with the actual QB he's going to be throwing you the ball in game. I'm telling you bro that chemistry is going to bail you out. Routes on air you're going into A tier bro. And finally we got the catching drills bro. Now I love the tennis balls just because you don't need anybody else to help you out. Now this wasn't until I got to college but once I started doing this it really helped me to track the ball a lot better. But yeah I would start with one ball in my hand. I will pump my arms, throw it off the wall, catch it. Put another ball in my hand while I'm still holding the first one. Pump my arms, throw it off the wall, catch it. And then you eventually work up to three balls in one hand. Throw it off the wall, pump your arms, catch it. And that just makes it so you really have to focus and look the ball all the way until it hits your hand. Because think about it like this, bro. If you can catch a tennis ball while two other tennis balls are in your hand, imagine how easy it's going to be when you get two hands to catch a football that's ten times as big as one of these balls. But yeah, I would literally just rep these out all the time. Over the shoulder, catch it over the shoulder, catch it, just so that way I could build confidence. Now all of a sudden when I'm in the game and I have to catch an over the shoulder football, it looks huge and there's no chance I'm not gonna be able to catch it. This drill really helped me boost my catching confidence and confidence is honestly the most important thing when it comes to catching a football. Cause if you've done something a million times, you're gonna be confident at it because what is the million and first time? All it is is just another rep of something that you've done so many times before. Tennis ball is going in the A tier. And finally bruh, we got the jugs machine right here. Now the jugs machine is really helpful because you can speed up how fast the ball comes. And what me and some of my teammates did in the offseason was we would practice catching footballs faster than the quarterback could actually throw it. So that way when we we're in practice or in the game and it's an actual live quarterback throwing the ball, it's going to feel like it's in slow motion. Now I get it though, jugs machines are crazy expensive and it's going to be hard to get somebody to come and work with you all the time. I mean the tennis ball drills are cool but there's not going to be anything better for you than actually catching live footballs. I'm talking about seeing the football, looking it in, tucking the ball. Those are some things you just can't get with tennis ball drills by yourself. Now at the end of the day you can get something out of every single one of these drills but it's just important that you know when to use what drills when you're trying to train certain movements. I don't know if y'all like this video or not. This is brand new for me. I'm gonna try some new formats and give you guys some new kinds of content. Hey but I seriously love y'all man. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to Jesus Christ. Shout out to King. Hey but I love y'all man. Be easy. Hey! Hey if I do this juggle and kick it I'm him. Watch this. Oh! I just hit the light, bro. W power. L aim.